Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, When the Mentally Unstable Run to God. When the Mentally Unstable Run to God. Some of you all are concerned about family members and friends who, over the years, you saw signs that they were making all sorts of poor decisions. You saw that there was sadness, depression, tiredness, You saw that they had been used and abused by others, and you were quite concerned about their mental stability. You even went so far as to talk to those who you trusted and mentioned their behaviors. So for some individuals, rather than seek professional counseling, rather than do some serious study on what exactly is going on with them mentally, physically, rather than listen to the doctor's orders and do what is right to live healthy, they decided to simply run to God. I'm not going to take the medicine. I'm not going to see the counselor. I'm not going to sit down and, uh, just think about all of the things that I did that were, and then you can fill in the blank. So they self-medicated using religion. They self-medicated like the alcohol alcoholic uses alcohol and the drug user uses drugs. They self-medicated in this way for many, many years. And the downside is that despite all of the church visits, despite all of the individuals who quite boldly spoke to him and said, you need a little bit more than Jesus, they continued on. And for some individuals, they lost everything. God, why have you allowed this to happen? The Lord said, "Uh, (laughs) I've used individuals over the years to talk to you about what you're saying and what you're doing that is drawing all sorts of confusion, not just for yourself, but for others, and you refuse to listen. And so he lets them wander, if you will, like Nebuchadnezzar in the wilderness. And some folks, after their wilderness experiences, said, oh, okay, now that my mind is back, now I know how to behave myself in the way that God has called me to behave. Others, they're still in their wilderness experience, along with pride and vanity, conceit. Uh, Others are there with their drugs, their alcohol, their sexual immorality. immorality. Uh, You've got others that are in their wilderness experience where they have lost so much financially. Others who have hit rock bottom to the point where their family can't even recognize them. There are so many different types of believers and sometimes it's difficult at first glance to see the mental instability in some and where God has them when it comes to walking with him or not walking with him, but walking alone. When I took a look at psychology today, every now and again, I do go there because we do have our share of individuals who want to hear not just the scriptures, but they also want to hear how does some of the subject matter align with psychology. There were 14 traits that the psychologists found when it came to highly religious people, okay? Some folks, we would call them highly religious. I know that over the years, some individuals have said this sort of thing about myself. Um, But for purposes of this particular audio, we're going to define the highly religious as those individuals who are mentally unstable, running to God. They are using faith to self-medicate, okay? Um, And so there's these traits that show up with highly religious people. Now, 
there are some positive traits, some of which, you know, all of us as believers may have been uh, described as um, when the psychologists had defined um, these connections, um, they called them the big, uh, the big five personality traits, extroversion. Uh, this is the warmth, right? People who see themselves as kind and compassionate are more likely to be religious. Um, gregariousness, which is no association with religiosity. Assertiveness, also no association with religiosity. Activity, excitement-seeking, positive emotions. People who are enthusiastic and energetic are more likely to be religious, okay? Um, they found in the highly religious, though, neuroticism. Anxiety, hostility, depression, self-consciousness, impulsiveness, people who view themselves as capricious and easily agitated are less likely to be religious, and vulnerability. They found that the highly religious uh, viewed themselves as capable and accomplished, competence, order, dutifulness, people who view themselves as having a high adherence to standards of conduct are more likely to be religious, achievement, striving, people who view themselves as having a high will to succeed are more likely to be religious, self-discipline, deliberation. They also found agreeableness such as trust and straightforwardness. They tend to be direct and frank in the way they behave toward others are more likely to be religious. They found altruism, People who see themselves as helpful and unselfish. Compliance. People who see themselves as forgiving and differential are more likely to be religious. Modesty. Tender-mindedness. They also found openness to experience, fantasy, aesthetics, feelings, actions, ideas, values. Now, When the uh, psychologists analyzed the personal data from over 1 million people in more than 55 countries and 2,000 cities around the world, they found that the big five personality traits were much better at predicting religiosity in highly religious countries such as Nigeria, Kenya, Jamaica, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, and less effective at predicting religiosity in less religious countries such as Sweden, Norway, Belgium, Denmark, and Estonia, okay? Now, and just so you know, that particular article was found on Psychology Today, titled 14 Traits Found in Highly Religious People, written by Mark Travers, PhD. When we look at, though, these traits that have gone haywire, we're talking about the one that you can't sit with them without them going on and on about, look at this scripture, look at that one, this is what happened at the church, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going, it's faith, it's faith, it's faith. Do you have a job? Do you have something other than the church, the church, the church? Then you got some individuals where it's not about the church, the church, the church, but what it is is that they've been through so much drama and trauma that they have leaned on all things of faith. I have come across my share of people who just embrace several different religions. They mix them all up and their conversation sounds confusing, okay? Just to put it plainly. And so it's hard to keep up with an individual who's all over the place. And it's, it's obvious that they're running from the things that have brought them down. So yes, she's so kind. Let's just use an example. She's so kind. She's so warm. She's so compassionate. I absolutely love her. But, and some of you all, you can check out my book. She's crazy. This sort of thing can show up in relationships to the point where people say, I don't want to be with you any longer because of A, B, and C. It can turn into abuse. It started off kind, the, you know, great, Christian who was doing so much, you know, attending church and everything. And then they're a totally different person at home. Okay. When you're not dealing with the brokenness in a healthy, functional way, the dramas and traumas of yesteryear, the things that you're running away from and you're using religion as a cover up, 
you will be exposed and it's no different than the child of darkness when i was brought into the faith irresponsibly okay years ago and i say that when i was brought into the faith irresponsibly that means that they did not take the time out to sit down and see what my psychological makeup was. They weren't interested in listening to where I was coming from other than, oh, you were abused. Oh, OK. Uh-huh. And then we need to get this daughter into the church so that she can help us out. That's irresponsible. Why are you going to have individuals who you know what their history is? You know that they've been used and abused. You don't know if they have received the necessary help mentally in order to even deal with your people, you see. And time and time again, the church makes this sort of mistake. They don't run background checks. You can get a job at a local fast food restaurant, but if they don't run that background, you know, <laughs> or they don't sit down and talk with you, or anything else do you think that you're going to have the job do you think that you can just walk in right off the street and just have the job absolutely not we need papers on you we need you to fill this out we need to do you know depending on what the industry is we need to do a thorough background check what have you you see but you've got those who slip through the cracks you got those who don't have any type of rules regulations policies procedures nothing in place and then they wonder why they get slapped with lawsuits you see, then there are those individuals that know you can't sue somebody who they obvi obviously told you, look, I don't have a certification in this particular subject matter. But what I can do is guide you or lead you to. Right. And so then you have the mentally unstable that because you didn't do because you couldn't provide because and it's like, wait a minute. This is where you start to see the things show up with some people of faith that were you really a person of faith or were you just nothing more than a troublemaker or maybe someone who has all his or her marbles, but you're just out here to create division, to slow some people's role, to keep them from having a platform or whatever else, you see. We've got those of faith who align themselves with some very interesting people and when they do this is where in some cases the cult mentality shows up and now they're out here recruiting other people for the sex cult for the religious cult for the dark arts cult <laughs> for the fraternal cult for any type of cult and those that recruited them in accepted them in knew that they had all sorts of quirks about them but you're going to be good for the agenda and then we'll sacrifice you like the lamb that you worship, Jesus Christ. You see, look, the brokenness is all around and this pretending like it's not there and ignoring it and saying, well, we'll just pray about it is not enough. I don't want someone who's freaking out leading me in a church setting or anywhere else. And this is where the businesses have to do more thorough checks and not only that they have to have people around the individuals that are watching these people like hawks because they can tear down your organization when they are mentally unstable dysfunctional and never got the help that they needed and some of you all you know <laughs> Because either you've been through the fire with some of these indiv individuals or you yourself have lost many jobs and been kicked out of many churches because you just don't seem to get it. And meanwhile, some individuals are saying, well, she's saying it's all about Jesus or it's all about what God got her on or what have you. And meanwhile, it's about that medicine that should have been changed a long time ago or that medicine that they stopped taking a long time ago and that supposedly Jesus healed. And in some cases, this does happen. But for other people, it doesn't. This is where God has them in this headspace where you need all the supports that you possibly can get. Because sometimes the world is just too hard to deal with. Come on. Now, when I looked at the scriptures, because a lot of times the people who are running toward God with their mental instabilities and their you know, weaknesses, and we've gone through this ourselves. There's a brokenness. And once again, if it's dealt with irresponsibly, 
then it can cause all sorts of havoc. But when it's dealt responsibly, not only are we praying and we're fasting and we're studying, but we're also getting the necessary supports where necessary, depending on what the trauma is, because there is no one size fits all kind of counseling. And those of you all who are counselors and social workers and so on and so forth, ministers, you know that. Now, Psalm 34, 18 says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. He is near. He is right there with them. Okay. So that there's no disputing about it. The atheist, the agnostic, you know, those that just have issues with God, they can say all they want. No, no, God's not with them. They're just crazy or whatever else. But at the end of the day, yes, God is definitely with all of us. He's near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. When I came to the when I came to the church and when I was crushed in spirit and brokenhearted, it was as a result of abuse that had taken place. Now, yes, you're supposed to be cautious of the individual that shows up and says, look, this is what happened. But then they don't show any signs of improvement. Instead, they start mail bashing or they start, you know, freaking out or they're doing some other things. Okay. I knew some individuals who came into the church setting just as I did. And that's just what they did. You see, they hadn't sat with the domestic violence counselors. I did. They hadn't gone through the various steps in terms of controlling one's uh, mind and body and spirit. How to deal with things behaviorally in a functional way. Not freaking out, not going off, not talking about you going to go upside somebody's head and all this other stuff. But there's those anger issues that result as a result of you having gone through abuse. And some of you all know this all too well. And this is why there's the breathing exercises, right? That's why for some of you all, you know, you've got to listen to the classical, the quiet types of sounds. You've got to go into a meditative, uh, trance-like state. Whether people agree, disagree, judge, whatever the point is, is that's what makes you stay in a headspace that is functional. And I get it because I am that type of individual. I not only do my share of things to keep me in a calm headspace, but I know other people who have done it. And, you know, we go on and and we become successful. Now, the thing is, is that, You're welcoming somebody into the church and you don't know anything until you start to spend some time because sometimes the mental instability doesn't show up until days, weeks, months later. And then it's like, oh my goodness, I would have never pegged. Is that person on their medicine? Did they come off their medicine? Were they ever prescribed any medicine, right? Psalm 147.3 says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So however that healing comes, God himself has a way of showing not just the individual who claims that, oh, I, God is with me, but those around him or her in terms of guiding them towards proper treatment. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. We have individuals that, yes, in their mental instability, they will quote scripture. But at the same time, you're not trusting in the Lord with all your heart if you don't trust that God can use people, places and things to get you out of bondage. Come on. Oh, no, I'll be fine, says the woman who's going through menopause. Okay, but there's some things that you need to take. No, God got me. Mm -hmm. And now you're freaking out and you're doing all sorts of crazy things. And you, you know, your kids are upset or your husband or your, you know, I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on in the household. But she says, God got me. Uh, There's been those individuals that, oh, God's with me. I ain't had a drink since last week. (laughs) But you got 30 some odd years of drinking or 15 or or five. But the point is, is that your drinking has been destructive. Your house is dirty. Your you know, people don't want to come around you. You broke things. You did things incorrectly under the influence. You see. I mean, but we got those once again. I don't need God. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Well, I acknowledge him. I pray every day. Mm hmm. While I'm sitting up here smoking and drinking and having a good old time. God know how I am. 
Okay, but here's the problem. When life is hitting you on all sides, how are you dealing with these sorts of things in a functional way without leaning on your vices? You see, without leaning on your vices. God created you. I understand why all of us need to lean on the one true God. But drugs and alcohol, give me a break, right? <laughs> so Isaiah fifty-seven fifteen. for thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. God is able to. He will fix a broken man, a broken woman, if you so want that to be done. I've got to be the one to usher you over into the atmosphere where those people are very knowledgeable on what you're going through. I've got to be the one to guide you over into the scriptures that will uplift you and motivate you and move you. Right. There are those around you that that's what their calling is. But when somebody's not ready to receive that calling, what is it that we have done over the years? We push back, we yell, we cry. We don't want to be around that person. You make me feel some kind of way. I don't like you. You're this, that, and the other. Lord Jesus. Some people, as much as we love on them and we want what's best for them, there is God himself that will call us to let them go. I know that's a hard lesson, especially when it's a child that's going through and you see that they're mentally unstable and they're running, yes, to the Lord, but yet there's still some other things that need to be dealt with and they're pushing back. I've got to let you go because I can't be going, you know, down the street running after you every time something happens with you. I've got to put you in somebody else's hands. Lord Jesus. And I've come across parents who had to do just that. They drove them to the hospital. They and and they drove away mentally gone. Some of them went so far as to say, Lord, oh, Lord, why? Why did you call me to this type of parenting? You see, and so the parent has to get counseling for his or herself as well. You see, there's some tough tough situations out here and we've got to continue to pray and we've got to be the ones that guide individuals to where they need to be in terms of whatever they're struggling with we can't be all to everyone God didn't call us to be all to everyone when you see unstable emotions you will see them when people are extremely depressed they're always talking about even they're depressed Anxiety, they all even mention that they've gone, gone through a lot of anxiety over situations and so on and so forth. Irritability, it may last just a few hours or it may last for days. And sometimes this happens, why? Because all of us have gone through our share of stressful events, but these emotions are not meant to be there forever and always. So, even if there is this struggle, you're still supposed to have the supports around you. Some people, it's intense anger, freaking out, throwing things, acting up, been dealing with this for years. That gives them no excuse to be this way to other individuals. You know how I am. I know that you need some help. And this is why when we saw these sorts of things around us, we were like, no, uh, -uh. I see that there's some trouble in the waters and I don't want to be in those waters. So I'm going to distance myself. I'm going to safeguard my family from this because this person or persons have never sought counseling or they have sought counseling, but it didn't do anything for them. Or they've got something that's going on inside their minds and they refuse to take anything for it. I cannot be in this type of atmosphere. They have difficulty controlling the anger or for some individuals, they're intense uh, and, and bored and uh, just sad or, you know, just there's so much going on. And so they know this about themselves. And so, oh, for some of them, they just run to the Lord. The Lord will heal me. You said the Lord will heal me. Many are called, mm, but chosen are few. So. And we can't answer all the times that God, he healed some individuals and others he didn't. Sometimes it wasn't our time. 
when everybody else was getting healed all around us, we were like, okay, Lord, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm still trusting in you. And the Lord said, yeah, well, trust your way right over to the doctor's office because your situation is really intense right now. And it was for me after I had two babies um, in less than 15 months apart. My body was traumatized. My brain was bouncing. <laughs> I was tripping. And I talked to one of my relatives and she said, yeah, you take your butt to the uh, doctor's, honey. <laughs> <laughs> right and I praise God for her because I wouldn't be talking to you right now if it wasn't for her my mind was going wild and hence I wrote when mothers cry after I got myself together and still was struggling while I was writing a book with some things but my mind was together I wasn't volatile and I wasn't a threat to others so I thank those of you all who've taken the time out to listen. You're not the only one. You've seen your share of mentally unstable. And as much as you love on some of these believers, mm, yeah, something's not right. I get it. So if it's in your power to guide somebody towards some help or you yourself, if you need some help, let's get it. Do what you need to do. I thank you so much, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Enum Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving and blessings to you.